All right, so there we have the 25461. Uh, then we're going to have the sales commission and the uh, sales salaries, which we're going to bounce back to the selling and, and expense budget. So here's the sales commission, the sales salary. We could have combined them into just selling expenses here, but we're going to break them out in our cash budget. So we broke those out separately. Here those are there. Then we're going to have the general and administrative expenses. Once again, we're going to jump back to our step seven where we calculated the general and administrative. We're going to look at the salaries. Later, we're going to see where that note is calculated as well. Okay, so there is our general and administrative that we pulled over. And then all this other stuff are going to be other areas that we haven't put a prior budget to. One's going to be dividends. Are we going to pay out dividends to the shareholders? And we're going to have to make an assumption on that. We have the loan interest here. So we have two loans out at this point. We're assuming that the interest rate is 0.01 for a month. You know, not a yearly interest rate for like a monthly interest rate. So we're saying this 12,000 here, 12,000 times 0.01. That's where this 120 is. We're paying 120 cash on that. And then we've got the uh, loan of 500,000 times 0.01, which we also saw on the general administrative expense. And so there's that uh, that 5,000 there. Purchase of equipment. We don't have anything in July that we're estimating, but that's another thing that we'd have to think about. Are we purchasing equipment for cash, the cash portion of the purchase of equipment? Anything that we financed, of course, wouldn't be on the cash budget. Okay, so then if we added all this up, I won't do the calculator, but if we added all this up, we would then come out to the cash disbursements of the 4, 427, 177. And then if we subtracted out these two, then we would have the cash receipts up here of 530, 568 minus the 427, 177. And that's going to give us 103, 391. Now I'm going to make another assumption that we commonly do in, in a problem, commonly do in practice, and that's going to be that we want to maintain a minimum balance of 40,000. That's going to be an assumption that we're going to make in this particular problem. And if we uh, receive more than that, if we're above the 40,000 each month, we're going to pay off the line of credit. So we have this line of credit. That's what this short-term loan is. We're basically saying, hey, if we dip under 40,000, take out a loan. We've made a line of credit in order to do that, to, to have some security there. And if we go over that uh, period, uh, that amount of 40000 then let's pay off the short-term loan. We're over that amount. We're going to pay off the short-term loan, 12000 And then if we uh, calculate our ending balance, we then have the 530, 568 minus the 427, 177 minus the 12000 And we have the $91 uh 391 now okay so that 91 391 is the ending balance of july which will be the beginning balance of august that's where we're going to start in august then we're going to go through the same process again so we'll jump through a little bit faster here same ideas though we got the cash receipts from customers i won't go back and pull that but we're going to pull it from the same place we pulled this and then if we add these two up we've got the total cash available then we're going to go through our disbursements. So we got first payments for raw materials. Now this number here we got from our balance sheet last time because remember there's a timing difference. 